What's up, Packers fans? Aaron Negler here with Cheesehead TV, joined by Ross Uglum, the publisher of Packer Report and a purveyor of fine Packers takes anywhere you go on the internet, especially twitter.com. Uh, also, a contributor to the Cheesehead TV draft guide uh, on a number of fronts. Ross, how are you today, buddy? I'm good, man. Excited to uh, to talk ball. We uh, it's been a while. Getting ever so close, and what, what a you know what a year. What a what a year to have four top sixty picks. Absolutely, what a time, time to be alive. Uh, right, truly. And uh, you know, before we dive into, I know for the draft guide, you specifically focused on the wide receiver group, which, hey, what a hot commodity this year, <laughs> and the edge group, another area you got to think the Packers will be looking at probably early on in this draft. Uh, but before we get there, I just want to do, I do want to touch on the piece you wrote regarding Jordan Love and what a mistake that pick turned out to be and how it was time to move on from Jordan Love. I just want to let everybody know, if you have the draft guide, please make sure you read it. I disagree with almost every single word, but <laughs> it is very well laid out and it is extremely well written. And I think your point is well made. I don't agree with it, but I totally get where you're coming from. So how's that? How's that for pubbing this piece yeah. that you clearly spent a lot of time on that I totally disagree with? Uh, yeah, I mean, so if you want to get into just like the absolute nuts and bolts of sure. the, you know, my, my theory, we'll call it my theory. Right. right. Um, a lot of it depends on how you view, you know, the Rogers situation, what your belief right. is. You know, I know he kind of had his talking heads or at least the guys that he can, you know, Gets stuff oh, to the ones he right. trusts, right? A lot of, a lot Team of the, Rogers, lot, yeah. Right. A lot of the phrase "retire as a Packer." Rap said it. A, bu- a bunch of guys yep. said it on that Monday when the yep. news came out. Um, lots of lots of "retire as a Packer" going around. Yeah. So if you believe, as many do, that, um, and, and 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 it's certainly fine to believe that it's a year to year contract, and that there's every possibility that if uh, they don't have the season they want to. Um, this upcoming year, you know, he, he retires or bails, or maybe they win the Super Bowl and he bails and, and whatever. Right. But the, the basic point being Aaron Rodgers is going to be the green Bay Packers after you need to make the fifth year decision on Jordan love, which by that the way true. is that a is $20 million decision. Yep. People just talk about the fifth year option. Like it's another right. year. There of... is a number attached to that option. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very much so. Very and, and, and so my point is, okay, so, you're, you, you're past now the point, and, and this is maybe where you disagree the most, I don't know, but you're past now the point where Jordan Love is the future quarterback of the Green Bay Packers, and in my mind, Jordan Love is now the backup quarterback of the Green Bay Packers and no longer the future. And you can disagree, and there's I'm sure there's plenty of people that do, right. but if you view him as the backup, my point is, okay, you're now in a situation where you have this older quarterback um, that wants to go the Brady route, that wants to win a Super Bowl. Certainly isn't taking the uh, contractual discount that Brady did for the uh, for the Patriots and for the Buccaneers, but right. th- such is life. He did give them some cap relief, though. Yeah, I'll yep. give him that, no doubt. Uh, but in in general, I just said okay. As the great Tom Moore, you know, said, we don't practice effed. Right. <laughs> and if the, and if Rodgers goes down, they right. are effed. Right. So there's right. no Super Bowl with Jordan Love at quarterback. At least I don't think so this upcoming right. season. So then you 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 whittle that down to okay, well, what does a backup quarterback mean? And it says okay, Rodgers rolls his ankle um, and has to miss four games. Right. What? And for me, here's the the real question. What percentage increase would you say that the Packers go two and two or three and one in those four games if it's Love instead of Bankert? Right. I think. And, and I posed that question. I asked a lot of you know I asked a lot of people. What do you you know What do you think? Um, that you know maybe two games on the road, two games at home. What what do you, what do you feel like the difference is between Love and Bankert, and is that worth a top sixty pick? In my opinion, no. And I feel like they're the best thing for Jordan Love is maybe also to well get him someplace he can play, yeah, right? I mean, or exactly. at least has a chance to compete to get on the field. I feel so that. I feel the, that. The, the closing paragraph was basically, Love is no longer right for the Packers. The Packers are no longer right for Love. Get a top 100 pick and move on with your life. Install Kurt Bankert as QB2. Draft Skylar Thompson. I don't care whomever in, mm-hmm. you know, round five, six, or seven. And, you know, move on. Because... I think with, with Rogers cap situation too, 
um, when he does decide to not be a Green Bay Packer anymore, there's a very good chance they're going to stink. And you're going yeah, to want it lets off stink. a bomb in there if he yeah. does it in the next two years. It lets off a bomb in their cap. There's no yeah. doubt about that. Although, who knows? They could do some kind of rework deal sure. and blah, blah, blah. To sure. me, I just, it feels a year early to me. I understand everything you're talking about. It's just like he, he meaning Jordan, is pretty much yep. exactly where Aaron was in terms of his progression, what he looks like on the field. This is a very important summer for Jordan. And by getting him on the field for one more summer, perhaps you do generate some draft capital interest. You know what I mean? And because the, right now, if you're looking at his preseason work and that one start against Kansas City, no one's giving you a top pick for that. Yes and no. I mean, the, my, my disagreement with that would be if you believed in Jordan Love and you haven't seen, you know, in, going into the draft and you haven't seen enough to dissuade you from that, there is value in the contract. And that's what I've always talked about. And what I talked about the day after they drafted him was, you want to be able to build these super rosters because you saw the Chiefs win a Super Bowl exactly. with no, a no, super no. roster with Mahomes. Right. Then they paid Mahomes. Now all of a sudden Tyreek Hill's not on the team. Right. Now all of a sudden Tyron Matthews. And that's, look, the Packers have been living that no super roster life for a long time. Mm -hmm. But to a, another team, two years of Jordan Love making no money no doubt. with, a, with an option Absolutely. has more value than one year of Jordan Love. But they got to believe no in it some way shape or form right. on the field and if you right. know and so that was my point was so far his two-year deal has more value than his one-year deal i feel you i feel that yeah sure. maybe there's a gm out there that wants to pull the trigger we'll see that's the other thing draft day is still like yo like about a little over two and a half weeks away there's plenty of time for someone to put together a deal yeah maybe that happens on in draft weekend i doubt it but you never know so you could uh you could be prescient in your writing, I'm just glad, we'll just see. glad it didn't happen before the draft. I know, came out. like you said it. I love there's a little <laughs> editor's note at the top, like this could all be moot by the time you read this. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Um, I spent no, 12 I, hours writing. I know this, that's but what I mean. It's really <laughs> well written. It's really well put together and very well argued. That's what I. I and people, if you haven't read it, get the draft guide. I'm telling you, yeah. if for no other reason than this great article from Ross. But uh, let's get to the prospects you did break down for the draft guide. Like I said at the top. Wide receiver and edge, two positions I think the Packers were certainly going to be having some interest uh, throughout those first two days, no doubt about it. Let's start on the wide receiver side, the offensive side, because obviously that has been the headline du jour since the trade of Devontae Adams followed hard upon by MVS signing a deal uh, over there in Kansas City. And then it's funny because then it kind of gets lost in the wash, but EQ also left and yeah. signed with Chicago. So it's like that's a lot of wide receiver talent that Aaron Rodgers – had zero question about throwing the football to like you talk about the trust and all that you had no problem throwing to any one of those guys and now they are all playing for different teams so let's look at this group i i know i, I want to start selfishly with my favorite guy sky Moore, who you have down at number nine which i totally understand especially considering some of his limitations athletically um his just pure measurements etc but talk to me as a fan of his game how do you think he fits in Green Bay? Because as I always tell everybody, if I really like a guy, that's almost certain death for his <laughs> possibility of wearing the green and gold. But let's live in fantasy land for a second. Just humor me and tell me why Sky Moore would fit in Green Bay or maybe why he wouldn't. Talk me out of that pick uh, potential. Sure. Well, I th you know, I think the simplest and I'm, I'm just going to pull up um, his relative athletic score here just because I want to see the actual. Right. Height, right. yeah, five oh nine five. That, that's that's where we'll that's where about. trouble in paradise comes. I know. Yeah, yeah I we'll know. talk about you know forty time and four four one is great. So as you know, some of the other things, um, you'd like a guy that small to have that sub seven three cone. Ted loved his three cone, and I, and I don't think yep. I don't think Brian feels that differently about it. But I, I, it, it looks pretty similar, right? As far as yep. the draft history so far for Brian lining up with kind of not always but kind of yeah. mostly with Ted's and I love Sky Moore's game I I, I think I he's, do too. He, he's spectacular the film is great I think he was uh PFF college's top graded receiver um you know from then on play out you know play in play out basis right. um but you know you, you'd have to have the exact same thing kind of happen although I don't think they view him that way you know um I think it might have even been me I don't remember that entire draft was a blur it feels like but somebody <laughs> asked Goody right. like Right. You because I asked him at the combine the last time we were all allowed there. Yeah. Because in the 2019 class, there are a lot of cool wide receivers that were shortish. Yep. And I just said, you, you know, did. Like, I remember you specifically yeah, you asked yeah. about the thresholds. That's right. <laughs> and 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 he just said, like, hey, we you know, we don't want to eliminate good football players, but 
Ted put these things in place for a reason and, and so on and so forth. Right. Well, then they take Amari and it's like, okay, well, <laughs> exactly. what, what are we doing here? And he right. basically admitted like, this is the slot position in the McVay, LeFleur, mm-hmm. et cetera, offense. He didn't phrase it that way, but he's like, we view Amari as like a, a running back slash wide receiver position. We don't view him as an X or a Z and therefore our height requirements do not apply to Amari Rogers. Right. Well, you would have to have the exact same conversation about Sky Moore, except with Sky Moore, I kind of view him as a Greg Jennings guy where he I do too. Exactly. Where where he can win outside. But you saw like in Super Bowl 45, they had James Jones and Jordy Nelson outside and they had Greg Jennings nuking people from the slot. And that's where you kind of have that. And here's where the other problem besides just the height thresholds comes in with Sky Moore. Who are your two actual receivers yep. that you have something invested in perimeter wise or whatever Rogers yep. and Cobb. Yep. Yep. <laughs> no, I feel you. I and, feel and you. There are so few and look, obviously, I think the wide receiver room is going to look completely different um than it does right now. I'm still not, you know, removing the idea of an outside addition, but as currently constructed, right. You add Sky Moore and it's like, okay, who lines up? Hey outside? man, let's do the fun bunch <laughs> like the Redskins in the eighties. Come on now. Yeah. Let's do but, it. Uh, run the Smurfs, the, thing. the return of the Smurfs. Let's yeah, run it. the uh, run the deal that that Pittsburgh always runs the three by one. Have Lazard out wide and just bunch up the little all receivers, in, baby. <laughs> all in. All right, let's get to guys who they probably will draft because I'm sure. I'm I sure. very much understand that they probably won't draft Sky Moore, but I just love his game so much. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, um, yeah, absolutely. Looking at your top, say five or six guys here that you've ranked, um, a lot of names that Packers fans are undoubtedly familiar with at this point in the draft process, but who do you think is most likely now we know there's no way to know how the draft board is going to fall, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. But who do you think given their parameters and their kind of uh, the things they look for at the position, who do you think is most likely out of, you know, the Olavs, the Watsons, et cetera, that have certainly their names have been bandied about a billion times uh, during the draft process so far, who do you think is most likely from that group? That it's funny because um, there are if you go strictly by like what they normally do, the fits are very hard to find. Um, I think Olave is light. Um, Watson is old. Uh, we don't know a ton about Drake London because he got hurt and we don't have numbers on him though. Young kid, multi-sport athlete from the Pac-12. Like Ted Thompson is looking down from heaven, like draft Drake London. I mean, that's <laughs> that's that's kind of where that's I think good. you know my my thoughts are. But like Traylon Burks doesn't pass the agility test. Sky right. Moore doesn't pass the height test. And you start just crossing these names off the list, and my whole top ten is gone. Um, but you know who the guy is? Is the the, the current darling of Packers Twitter, and that's oh, this the Georgia is. kid. Pickens, yeah. right, right. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. Pickens, uh, you know, he, he, I believe, and I'm, I'm going to just double check this here, but he is going to pass everything that he's actually tested. Kid blew out his knee in spring ball of 2020, then plays the 20, excuse me, we're in 2022, blows his knee out in spring ball of 2021, comes back late in the season and is able to, uh, play for Georgia. I think in the last four games, including games the national yep. championship game, everybody right. remembers him sitting down first round pick Daxton Hill over the Michigan Wolverines lined up outside on him and, and on a run block, he turfed him and then told the whole <laughs> sideline to shush, which got, <laughs> which got all of the, uh, right. you know, Lafleurians excited because that's the, <laughs> the, the run blocking, the run blocking aspect. Yep. No so we doubt. don't have, I'm looking at his card right now. We don't, we don't have agility numbers, but he's a young kid. This is a true junior six, three and some change ran a four, four, seven has a 10 yard split of 1.5. He is a bursty athlete. He's a big guy. He is a run blocker and he is what they don't have. And that's the discussion that we had, um, you know, regarding uh, sky Moore is Pickens is an X. Flat out, like you yep. can build put your on the receiving core off of Pickens and put him right. on the perimeter. Then you can have Lazard on the perimeter. Maybe Juwan Winfrey does make it. And, and then you start working in your interior guys like Rodgers and Cobb. And all of a sudden, just with the addition of George Pickens, your group starts to make a little bit more sense together. 
right as a whole yeah it's like back yeah. in the day when they're casting star wars and they want guys who work well together and they get the ensemble approach rather than casting stars i like this idea i'm, I'm all in on it <laughs> uh let's flip around and look at the defensive side and look at edge because look i put it out there on twitter a couple weeks ago i'm two weeks ago i want to say and it is surprising to me how many packers fans and i don't think it's a vocal group but i do think there are packers fans out there who don't understand possibly what a need edge is. And yeah. I get that they did just re-sign Preston. I understand they drafted Gary. And like those are two really good players. But past that, you know, yes, they've got a little bit of talent. Garvin can maybe hold up against the run. And, um, you know, we all love Tipa, but God knows he's, he's just too small to hold up long term. And you're going to need at least one more guy, if not two, and don't forget, they drafted Gary after literally signing the Smiths in free yeah. agency a few yeah. months earlier. You're drafting for investment long term. And I think this edge group, there's a real good possibility that we see one of these guys possibly that first night. Maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe day two. But at, we, there's uh, to me, I'd be shocked if we got out of at least the third round without an edge selection. I, I would too. And, you know, it's, it's, it is interesting. And I wish, you know, and I think as many people do, I wish they would have talked Whitney Merciless into one more run um, oh, just as, as yeah. that, as that third guy, if, if Rashawn gets perfect the stuff, rotational or, guy, a, absolutely. Totally. Yeah, and, and, and almost buys a red shirt year because right. it's funny, you know, we just talked about me crossing names off and I wrote something, I wrote a piece on Pack report and, and maybe you can link it in the comments or I can absolutely ab about, um, the, the COVID-19 pandemic, there's a chance that it's going to force the Packers to reevaluate how they view age. And, and I, I, I broke down how That's a really good point. That's so, a really so, good point. so, so seldom um, do the Packers go for an older player um, in round one. Uh, you, you, you go back and, and look through and I, I, you know, posted when clay was drafted, when BJ was drafted and went down, down, down. And okay. Well, how old were they on draft day? A lot of 21 year olds you know, even a couple, like Kenny was 20. Kenny was and, 20. And, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you, that still and, blows my mind when he signed his extension. What was he like 23 or something? Yeah, I mean, exactly. Crazy um, style. And then you look at a guy like, uh, Jermaine Johnson, fifth year player, Juco, then Georgia, then Florida state. Right. Normally you would just scratch him off. Boye Mafe. Who not, I love. That's a not kid I love. But if you go look at his, his year one through four tape at Minnesota, it's kind of, eh, Right. And then it's like, okay, well, is this guy good because he's 23 and other people are the, the guy blocking he's him is 20 on somebody, or, right? Or yeah. is he good? Um, same thing with my 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 love, the love of my life, um, Arnold <laughs> Ebikite uh from Penn State. He was behind Jason Owe, who I think goes by Odafe Owe now, but the the kid that the Ravens took, very, very young, exciting, athletic pass rusher. Ebikite is, as I say, an old. Um, Ojabo <laughs> is a guy without an AC or without an <laughs> is a guy without an Achilles tendon and you go through my top 11 edges and it gets scary because you go, okay, they're probably not going to be able to draft Trayvon Walker who is getting buzz. I just yeah. don't even understand. Um, they're probably not going to get a chance to draft Hutch. They're probably not going to get a chance to draft Kayvon. Carl Laftis is really the only guy that makes a ton of sense because you, you, like I said, normally you would cross off Jermaine Johnson and cross off Ebikite and cross off Mafe and, uh, the Kings Anik Barre, the guy from South Carolina, doesn't fit their normal athletic requirements. He's, as I've mentioned, he's the only guy in the top 11 who isn't a freak freak from an athletic standpoint. Right. So you just start crossing off guys and you're like, well, who the hell, what edge are they going to take? The guy without the Achilles tendon? I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't think so. You know, so Achilles tendon optional. Right. You can rush but, the QB, who cares? That's what makes this edge thing very, very, very interesting. And, and, you know, I, I made a joke about, um, Penning the tackle, who's another fifth year kid from Northern Iowa, and and Mafe, because I think Bill Huber had mocked those as his two picks. And I go, man, if they take two fifth year guys in round one, it's going to just blow up everything that I've understood the about what these guys of, do. Right, right. But at the same time, like I said, the COVID nineteen pan right. pandemic has just it has goofed up this draft class with fifth and like my guy from North Dakota State, who I think especially as a potential guard, Cordell Volson um, really, really played well at the Shrine Bowl, ended up testing way better at pro day and, and profiles athletically as a very elite guard, um, but can play a little tackle. 
He's a sixth year guy. He's going to turn 24. The guy from Central Michigan, Raymond's going to turn 25. Like there are some old dudes in yeah, this the old folks in this draft coming out here. I love it. I love it though because like yeah. that's a great point about. I'll definitely link to that article because that is a great point. As far as you remember, I remember Brian talking about that during the lead up to that first draft where there was basically no off season, there was no availability, there was no pro day combine, et cetera. And he did say back then, that was like two years ago where he was talking about how, you know, we may have to adjust our ideas of everything, not just athletic testing, but just how we view prospects regarding their age and what they've done and what they've put on tape and how much more important that must be because we don't have any other information. I'm fascinated to see how that plays out. Um, just in the terms of like, especially the first round investments, guys who you will have the option to put, get a fifth year option on. If it is a 24 or a 25 year old, what are they going to be 30 by the time you get their fifth year option up? That's right. Yeah, that's, that's and, and you look at last crazy. year when they had the limit last year, when they had the limited information, what did they do? They a lot surprised of every, schools. Yeah. They, they right. su- but they big surprised programs. everybody. By taking a guy that was more in the like forty to fifty five range, depending, he was fifty one overall for me, and that's fine. Right. Whatever, I'm going right. to turn out. I'm going to end up wrong. You know, it's going to be very similar to the Gary situation where I had him thirtieth overall, and he's going to be one of the best six or seven players in the class. Like I'm not right every time, obviously. Right. Um, but true junior, true he three years in college, true yep. junior, young Eric Stokes, and don't be surprised if it's. By the way, don't be surprised if it's a twenty one year old kid especially with that pick 28, don't be surprised if it's a 21-year-old kid that you might see ranked consensus 40th, 45th, or, or or 50th, and you'll go, oh, what the hell, reach. But it's just the way they do things, man, because there's I mean. a lot of guys. It's just what Ted always used to talk about as, yeah. as far as investment goes. You know, it's not so much plugging a hole, especially in the first round. They want to invest. They want a long-term return on whoever. Now, do they always hit? No, of no. course not. Right. No one does, but uh, that's their, like you say, that's a great point. They, that is what they are aiming for the, with those first round picks. And what I find really interesting, Aaron, is, you know, I, I think Brian Gutekunst has done such a better job than Ted Thompson. I don't mean to be disrespectful to Ted, oh, of but, course. but you know, my philosophy in team building has always aligned with sign for need and then you can draft for talent. And, yes. and I think Brian has done such an, and, and there've been times like you mentioned where, He'll sign and draft. He, he, he'll go, okay, right. we have a problem at at uh, edge. I'm going to sign two edges and draft an edge. We have a problem at safety. I'm going to sign Adrian Amos and draft Darnell Savage, and that's fine. Right. That's great. Um, but you're not pigeonholed into that spot. And they he's done such a good job over the years of signing the Devondre Campbell or signing the Christian Kirksey. Yep. And sometimes he's whiffed obviously by signing the Jimmy Graham. And yeah. things. Well, the and Graham, the- it's so funny because Graham was so clearly driven by Aaron Rodgers. That's his buddy, yeah. you know, like I get that. But to your point, to me, it's so funny knowing, having talked to Elliot when he was still in the building back in the day, I know for a fact there were so many times that he, Brian, Alonzo would go to Ted and say, let's get this guy or let's get that guy just as a, like, you know, the stopgap signing, not a huge contract, et cetera. And Ted would always say no, always wanted to like kind of default to his own guys, his own locker room, et cetera. I think Brian's done a fantastic job in making those signings so that he isn't caught like having to draft. And so my, my point with that is, Where's the wide receiver? Because right. that, to me, that's like the one it's thing. It's just like there's got to be something up there. Still. Right. <laughs> the you one know? thing that, and, and look, I'm think. all about, because I've seen, you know, um, go edge and safety in round one and then grab two guys in the second yes. round. Yep. And, Which wouldn't you know, surprise me. Right. Wouldn't not surprise me. But they kind of have to at least after they pick at 59, there better be a wide receiver. I mean, there <laughs> yes. better be either a veteran exactly added or they're right. be- and and so they are kind of pigeonholed in a way that they normally haven't been with brian right. as the gm i yep. feel like they've done an excellent job of really freeing themselves up to do whatever and they kind of can't like un- unless someone yeah joins well the- especially i do think obviously the Devonte adams thing is what drives all of this right, because yeah. Yeah. i do think and it sure from all the reporting around it, it sure sounds like they were working off maybe not the assumption but the idea that okay we will get Devonte done yeah. And then Devontae had other ideas. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's kind of their own fault in the sense they didn't get it done last summer when I think they could have, if they had been a little bit more willing to play ball and bend the rules a 
little bit, but they didn't. And now here they are. And to your point, it is kind of the first time where you think, man, they have got to do this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not something they normally, not a position they normally find themselves in. Yeah. But you're right. This is a draft where if they don't come out with a wide receiver those first two days, Oh my God! The riots. The natives will be the riots wrestling. in Green Bay. I mean, there's no, goodness, there's no question about that. There's no <laughs> question about it. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah. Oh, Ross, I could talk to you all day about the draft. This is amazing stuff. Thank you so much for making the time today. Please do check out his work, not just in the Cheesehead TV Draft Guide, which is exemplary, obviously, but also at Packer Report. Uh, he publishes the Packer Report. Does great stuff there. Follow him on Twitter. Ross, thank you so much for the time, man. Thanks, Aaron. Anytime.